Five rules for managing risk. Does your organization actively avoid taking risk? If so, you may already be falling behind competitors and losing touch with your customers and your markets. Hi, I'm Holly G. Green, the architect of PAUSE, thinking to thrive expert and author of the new book, Using Your Brain to Win. Keeping up in today's markets requires ongoing innovation, which involves a certain amount of risk. Unfortunately, I see too many organizations where stay the course rather than push the envelope has become the strategy of choice. And that's no way to get ahead in a global marketplace where new products and services can come from anywhere at any time. And it's easy to see why many leaders hesitate to embrace risk. In today's hyper-paced markets, one new product mistake or market miscalculation could have put a company so far behind that it never catches up or put it out of business altogether. So as a result, many organizations play not to lose rather than play to win. And many organizations have cultures that don't support risk taking. They may not overtly say don't rock the boat, but management decisions and ways of working focus on maintaining the status quo over exploring any new possibilities. Rather than avoiding risk, companies can learn how to manage and mitigate it by following five basic rules. Rule number one, accept the need to take risk. Start by understanding that what made your organization successful in the past will not necessarily do so in the future. In fact, if you do business in markets and industries that move very quickly, you can count on it. The faster your industry moves, the more risk you may need to take. Rule number two, Compare the risk versus the expected return on investment. Unless it's a matter of survival, don't bet the farm on one new product or initiative. It's okay to take a chance on a long shot every once in a while, but overall you're better off taking measured risk, where the potential upside obviously far outweighs the damage to the company should the initiative fail. Pause long enough to truly calculate risk and even plan those minimizing or mitigating strategies for it. Rule number three, make decisions based on data, not made up thought bubbles. Many innovation efforts fail simply because management doesn't take the time to gather data. Instead, they forge ahead based on what they think they know about the market or customer needs and then wonder why it goes over like a lead balloon. Never take a risk that's not supported by data. And make sure you collect both confirming and disconfirming data so you don't just seek out the data that proves your idea right and miss all the other data that's out there. Rule number four, do a reality check. Do you have the people, skills, and organizational systems and processes in place to make the initiative a success? If not, can they be brought into the organization without draining resources away from other critical areas? If the answer to both of these questions is no, move on to a more feasible project or allocate or reallocate resources. Rule five, always have a plan B. Before taking any risk, pretend that it has already failed and brainstorm the reasons why. Then create a plan B, maybe even a C, D, and E if necessary, should any of those reasons come to pass. No matter how well planned, it's the rare business initiative that unfolds exactly as expected. When you think about potential hurdles ahead of time, you prepare yourself and your team to deal with them effectively should they arise. Today's leaders have to get comfortable with many things previous generations of leaders didn't have to grapple with. Having too much data rather than not enough. A relentless rate of change obsoleting your own products before the competition does, and of course, higher levels of risk. As we've discussed, you can learn to manage and mitigate risk, but if you can't stand all this heat, get out of the kitchen and get a new chef to take over.